Hi everyone. How are you today? Thank you for joining in. Can you hear me? Okay, it seems like the sound is good. Okay, today I'm going to demonstrate, you know, focusing on how to make these, uh, you know, perfect corners for the lace work edges of the, you know, card using five needle tools. You know, pattern uh, I posted it on Facebook. You can download to your desktop uh, computer and then print from there. I'm using uh, the smaller version than provided for quick demonstration. Okay, so here, take a look at, um, at the corners that I was talking about. Okay, let me just focus on this one then. Uh, the corners there, right there. Uh, I have seen some that uh, the corner didn't match, so I thought, you know, maybe this is a good tutorial um, to help, you know, those who couldn't get the corners match, you know, to to have them matched. Now I can, I, after today, you'll be able to get all the four corners matched, not just two, okay? Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, uh, you can leave comments and I'll reply as soon as I can. Okay, yes. Um, at the end, you know, some some parcher couldn't get the corners matched. So I recommend at the end, you just make rounded corner, just like this one here instead. So you don't have to, you know, try to match the corners. The five needle tool is a bit different from you know, other tools. I chose this one because uh, the spacing of the needles are uh, uh, wider than most tools. So the cutting is a bit of a cha challenge. And then when you do something like this, uh, the corners really difficult to match. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the tools and material needed for, you know, making this card. Let's start with the embossing tool. Okay, we have, uh, as usual, from the fine, I'm showing from the finest tool to the largest ball tool. Uh, then you have the second size, uh, the third size, and then the fourth size, and so on. But today, again, we will take away the finest tool and then those large tools, leaving only these two for embossing between the perforations. Okay, so let me put that away. And then the, the five needle tool, that's what you need. I have both the old one, the old type, and then the new type. I still prefer the old one simply because they have, you know, the three flat, uh, sides where the finger can you know rest on it so your tool doesn't uh, turn around easily why this one um, is all rounded so it you can easily grab at the wrong side but I'll show you how to you know uh, make it that you don't grab the wrong size side and then you will need one needle one needle ball tool no, not ball tool, needle tool, one needle ball tool. And then um, a marker, scissors for cutting. Um, if you prefer, we still can use the, the tumble dryer. Tumble dryer. <laughs> okay, what you do is, uh, I won't rub on the parchment, but instead, uh, I fold it and then just uh, poke the, the needle through it 
then when you do perforations, you can, you know, um, poke through easier. Uh, I don't recommend using the Percasoft or the wax simply because they collect at the at the neck of the needles, and then through times it just make your needles uh, rusty, and they are hard to get rid of. Okay. Uh, you also need pins. Oops, I lost my pins. Uh, I'll use one needle tool instead. Oh, because I spilled something on my shirt and I went to change and then I forgot my pin. Anyway, uh, masking tape, as usual, you need it. And then uh, parchment paper. Okay. That's about what you need. And then the pattern, of course. Okay, I gave uh, two choices. One uh, just no opening, and then another one has the opening. So if, we, if you would want to show whatever behind it, then we can do the opening with the five needle tool and then match the corners as well okay but if you think it's too much just go ahead with the with the uh, this pattern here okay okay now uh, when you see the pattern there's always when I give uh, okay this is the pattern that I'm going to use when you see the pattern you always see uh, the side here saying you know, perforate, emboss, and then cut. Okay, so that's when you interpret into uh, the parchment, onto parchment paper. That's what it looks like. Okay, step one, shallow perforate. Uh, when you look at the holes here, right here, this is shallow perforate, meaning you don't poke uh, the needle through too, too deep, simply because uh, if you poke through too deep, when you emboss between the, the, the perforations, you either can break or fall into the holes or whatever, you know, accident it can happen. So when we do the first uh, perforations, we always do shallow. So it would look like that. And then the next step is uh, embossing. So uh, I see most of the time I see uh, circles around the hole. Uh, if you like it, it's okay, but for me, I go further to this step where everything is embossed, I mean fully embossed. Okay, let me bring it closer. You can see there. So meaning when I emboss, I just go over the, the holes in the middle. Okay, and then uh, before you go to the, uh, before you go to cutting, this is the necessary step where you re-perforate or uh, deep perforation. So the hole will look like that, which is uh, bigger. So this one will, you know, help you to put the scissors tips inside the holes easier than, you know, not, not than uh, the shallow perforations. Okay, and then uh, as I mentioned at the beginning that five needle tools, the spacing is uh, wider than any other tool so the cutting is you know uh, you're not going to get the nice picket cut so in order to make the hole come closer together we do the twist twist motion uh, with the with the five needle tool and then you can see this one becomes closer to one another so when you cut you can cut easier than no twist twist Okay, so I hope you understand this one first. Okay, let me see. Now, okay, let me uh, uh, mention a bit about here. When you start uh, with the first perforation, uh, the two needle there, you just place it along the, along the line of the card. And then when you go to the next perforation, the last two needle, the first two needle here, go back into this last perforation. 
and then the, the, the other needle placed on the line. So I'll show you how, how it's done. Okay, because we, we want the, the holes along the line uh, neater, because that's where it's left after you finish the card. So you want, you want whatever left on the card looking nice, while the outside here will get cut out. So, so you see sometimes I get like double holes there. This one not nice, you see, but this one also get double hole. But this one really, if it happens, I wouldn't worry because later this one will get cut, and deep perforation and twist twist motion will get rid of you know kind of blend, <laughs> merge the holes together. So I wouldn't worry about the outside, but I would worry about uh, the line uh, of the card. Okay. And uh, when you do when you do perforation, uh, let's mark this one here as the front of the card. Okay, so you do perforation from the front of the card, and then embossing you will be doing on the back of the card. So you you will see that which one is front, is which one is back, and then deep perforation again go back to the front of the card that you're working on. Okay. Okay. When I start uh, the project using the five needle and sometimes other tools too, if uh, uh, if I have problem trying to match uh, the needles onto the parchment, so I would work on the pattern instead of uh, go directly to your parchment. Uh, by doing this, uh, it helps eliminate making mistakes, of course. So uh, I will look where I want to start. Usually, I will mark first. You see on the tool. Oops. You see on the tool. Uh, can it focus? OK. On the tools, you see right here with the red dots there, that's where I mark uh, because I want to see this one uh, facing me all the time. So meaning that uh, I always use this way to perforate. So like I mentioned at the beginning, when I mark here, you can see that sometimes uh, each side, the spacing are different. Some, some needles, uh, some tool that you have, one side could be wider than another. So when you walk your needle, you have problem. If you, if you keep wanting to match those two last two uh, when you make the next perforations. So if your needle is supposed to be something like this, I mean, if your needle turn out to be like that. So when you walk, you, you will go like, uh, you know, go <laughs> out of the way instead of walking uh, straight because you try to match these two needles into the, the previous made perforations. So what I would do, I still, if I have these two really that looking like that, so when what I do is I would focus on this hole and then the next hole I would focus on the line. I would I wouldn't care about this one so much because like I told you at the beginning at the outside of the card where we make the lace the outside here will get cut out so you don't have to worry that you know you get double holes there and then it's gonna look bad rather that if you get double holes along this line here then that will not look so nice okay so I will show you how to walk the needle First, you mark your tool, like I suggest, even with the with the old embossing tool. There, I also mark that I'm using this side. So every time I hold the tool, this marks facing me. Okay, and then uh, let me see what I have missed. Okay. Uh, Now, before I start uh, perforate on these lines here, 
I would hold the two, like I said, these things facing me, and then I will poke on the side of this uh, of the card that I'm using this way, and then the mark is there. So I will use the marker, and they say the mark is here. Okay, uh, the reason I do this because once you keep turning your project around, your needle sometimes doesn't turn with you if you wish not to turn the needle. So you lose track of the, the way you hold the needle. Uh, I hope I make sense. So if I come to this side and I, if I turn the project this way, I would again, I would do something like that and then mark that the needle is facing this way. But if you didn't turn your, your project at all, then you're good to go with this one. But I normally do because I uh, have to find my best way of walking the needle. The way I do it is I put the line on the side, uh, on the left side, and then the two on the right side. Okay, so uh, let me see. Okay, now we. I'm going to start here. Now with the the five needle tool, the way we emboss uh, uh, this way, the way we emboss this way, you can see that I emboss one skip one, one skip one. So in order to have this end and this end the same, you need odd number, odd number of uh, perforations. So you have to be <laughs> uh, either counting or marking. I'll show you that you know which way I do, but if you if you perforate uh, a different way, which is this way, meaning every every perforation gets embossed, then you don't have to worry about the odd number or even number perforations because it always gives you that uh, embossed finished uh, uh, corner anyway. But with this one here, because we do one skip one, so we need to have a uh, odd number perforations. Okay, and that's why I work on the pattern first because uh, when I work on the pattern, I can mark. Let me show you over here. I can mark uh, embossed uh, perforation one skip one like that. So when I come to the end, I know that the corner didn't match. So I'll talk about this later. But I'll show you how to walk the needle here first. Okay, let me find, okay. Now I look at this one over here. Let me move on this one to the side. The way you hold the tool is uh, upright. Don't make any angle, simply because when you poke the hole, uh, at an angle, the opening of the of the holes you made uh, is not straight down. It will be like at the angle. So when you put the needle, I mean, when you put in the scissors tips to cut, you will have problem because uh, somehow the the paper open uh, kind of block the hole if you hold it, you know, at the angle like that. Okay, so hold it upright. If I put my tool at the at the camera there, you can see that it's upright, not this way. Okay. So start right here. I wouldn't come out to hang uh, the first perforation here because you can really uh, not lining up the tool properly because you don't have anything. I mean, you have only one corner there, but no line or anything out here. But if you want to, you can draw a line, then you can follow that line. But uh, I wouldn't uh, do that now. What I would do is I would just start here and then place the two needle there. Okay, let me get it closer. You see the two needle there, just put it right at the, the corner there and then at the other one on the line and then just go down. Because you're doing on the paper, not on the parchment, you can just go as deep as you want. 
okay and then when you walk the the next one when we do when we do continuous uh, perforations you always go back to the last hole so i suggest you looking at these two needle here don't care about the rest the this this one here the two i mean the needle will fall into the hole anyway if your tool is not like so bad like that okay even it it goes bad like that like i said uh, don't mind it but mind whatever on the line so i would focus on the line here and then keep going going until the end i mean you can count in your mind or you don't have to count i don't count because counting <laughs> always <laughs> miscount or you know like like here i didn't start at the first one so that's already miscount okay we keep going until the end that's why i choose i, I make the smaller smaller pattern uh, for demonstration so i can walk you through the end of the other corner you see keep your keep this two on the line all the time okay time whoops Sorry, let me turn off the sound. Okay, so I come to the end here. And to turn the corner, you need to have uh, another one going. But then, you know, it would look like that. Okay. And then this one here now, you can put another one because you already have that two holes uh, in place. No, I wouldn't do that. I would do the next one here and then leave that corner first. Okay, let me go this way. Okay, now I'm I'm not holding the needle that way, so I'm turning it this way. So whatever I have marked, it's the same there. Oops. Okay, so I turn and then I would start at the end here. And then make one hole, one uh, perforation there, and then fill in that one by matching all the needles there. Then you have the corner already, okay? And then walk this way until the end, just like uh, I just did on the other, on this side. Focus on the line. Some people like it, uh, uh, the line horizontally uh, and then do perforate that way which is fine i i can't because <laughs> I, I pro i'm probably st uh, strange because i have to do it this way okay keep going to the end without counting whoops So this way, like I said, we make making a template for ourselves, okay? And then I turn it back this way. Okay, let me bring it out a little bit. So before I, I will not continue on this side because I'm going to use this side and then flip it over and then the other side will match perfectly. So that's why uh, a small template like this, you know, work very well. So I'm using this one here before I turn, before, because now I don't know whether these corners match or not. Okay, so I use this uh, marker here, just touch here. This one I would emboss and then I will skip one and then emboss and then skip and emboss, skip, emboss. So you keep doing that to the end. Uh, the chance of miscounting is very I mean, it's like nearly zero, but if I keep talking without looking, I can miss, okay, one, skip, one, one, skip, one, skip, one, skip, one, skip, one, skip, one, skip, one, and then skip, one. Okay, well, how lucky. So this one I call lucky because... Uh, 
the last hole really almost at the line there so I wouldn't change or anything I would just keep it like that because you know then uh, the card will remain the same size on this side and then we try this one here keep going the same one skip one Don't mark it too big because once you mark it too big, then you get confused. You see now right here, uh, I run into trouble because uh, this one here look like, uh, let me find something, look like uh, the corner match because uh, the, end, uh, the end all embossed. But you can see this one here, will, if I turn here, then the line will come inside of the card. You see what I mean? If it comes inside of the card, that's why I asked uh, not to trace because there's room over here where we can shift the pattern, you know, to the right if you want to go ahead and turn over here. So the card will be slightly smaller. Okay? But if I don't want to turn here, I want the card to be slightly, you know, bigger. So I would add more. But when I add more, I need to add two, two of the five perforations to get the last one embossed. Okay, before because I left uh, the needle from my hand, and the chance of holding the tool, you know, uh, not the same way it happened. So I always go back. Let me move this one over here. Always, always go back to the last one that I made and then kind of, oops, kind of line up the needle, line up the tool. So when I bring the tool out, then it's lined up. So I go ahead, let me make the line first before I continue on. Because uh, accuracy is kind of important here. If you don't make the line, uh, you can go crooked, you know, not a uh, straight line. So making your your card. Uh, let me find the pencil. Okay, get the pencil here. Make your card. Uh, how to say? Could you could end up this this one narrower or wider than this side? So you always make the line outside here, and then okay again. I go back. To the last hole line up the needle and then continue on two more so now I mark again this one is embossed so now I get three corners match already and the cut is slightly bigger which is okay and then now okay we got it so the cut will be like a bit just one, uh, one five needle spacing bigger, which is okay. Now, that's is done for the template. Okay, so we're not going to do this one as I told you before because uh, we can make use of this one. Okay, let me uh, let me show you on the parchment. Okay. So after this, then again, I come to this uh, parchment paper and I mark this is the front. As I told you before, perforations you do from the front, emboss you do from the back. So I mark this one here and then put tape. Put tape on. So you see if you traced uh, before, where's where? <laughs> Somebody play with my tape, or oh, I play with my own tape. Okay, another one here. Okay. Well, I have to go look. Okay, I'm gonna make use of this one needle tool because I need pins, and I left them upstairs where I went changing. Let me find another one needle. I'll come back uh, quickly.
if I can find. Okay, I found. Okay. So you actually would need three pins, but I would need, I just used two here. So to start, I would poke one hole over here at the very corner. Uh, let me move one, this one up and then focus in more. Okay, at the corner there, okay, you poke the hole, follow the perforation pattern behind, okay. Now you have, all you have to do is just follow the, the perforation on the pattern that you just did. And then, uh, like I said, I would, you know, put a needle, one, two, you know, two, three, so it doesn't move. Uh, the parchment doesn't move from the pattern because sometimes tape uh, somehow move. So I will poke outside outside of the cut area, of course. Let me bring it out. Okay. So I would poke uh, maybe here and then here. Okay. Make sure that everything is in place. Then uh, we start perforation. Let me bring it in again. Now you already have these, you know, on top, uh, I mean on uh, below. Um, another option you can do, which if you didn't trace like I suggest you to, you, you can put the pattern on top of parchment and then you perforate from the pattern uh, onto parchment. Uh, you cannot see what you have, uh, what you call perforated, but uh, it gives you the ease of the needle fall into the holes so you don't miss the holes as often. Am I making sense? <laughs> okay. okay. Again, I know I'm using the needle on this side this way so I match the needle and then match the mark and then go follow follow uh, the pattern. Now, when you go, when the first time I said uh, we do shallow and shallow perforations, meaning you don't uh, poke it uh, too deep. You use only like one, maybe one eighth of the needle, the length of the needle, and then just uh, just mark. Like I said, look at the two needle here. Don't look at the other needle. Okay, and keep going until the end. Because of the camera, then it's kind of a bit further away from my eyes. So <laughs> I have to, I may miss some holes because the old eye can't see well. Okay. I keep going and going. As I said before, if you have problem following the pattern this way, you put the pattern on top of parchment and then uh, perforate from there. And you get more accurate because the needle fall into the hole uh, previously made on the pa on the pattern. I'll show you that uh, way uh, on the other side, okay, and then keep going the other way. So I turn this one around, and then I look uh, at uh, this one over here, okay, I'm holding the needle the same way again. So you always have it matched. Looking at the line, the two needles on the left side always stay on the line. Okay, making too much noise. So let me find the, this one here and just poke through it. Or you can put uh, this one, uh, the, the dryer sheet. Just put on the back of the pattern and then go from there. Let me line up the needle before I go to the next one. So I'm lining up the needle. 
and then keep going okay that's done okay i'm removing after this you know that you know everything matched no need to count or you know uh, emboss now so i'm removing the pattern okay oh uh, let me try to get the focus on this one here the camera can't look at the, the parchment let me put this one here okay now you can see you can see uh, what I have done okay so I bring the pattern back so the other side what you do I turn this one let me uh, bring it out again I bring this one oh shucks <laughs> okay uh -huh. okay now you can see I was doing it this way and then now maybe I should turn the the pattern instead so you can see better okay focus okay so I turn the pattern 180 degree so it's upside down and then this one is uh, this one you don't turn then you place it like that you can see the pattern right and then the template already turned to the other side so you just follow the perforations just like what we did uh, on the on those side uh, before doing that you have to match that's why you need needles the pins or needle uh, match try to match uh, the center of the of the one the last one here the center and then the center of that one right here you match and then poke through and then the other corner is the same you find the center of the five needle and then on the pattern as well so now you can see uh, the, tem the template we did really helpful and it helps the last corner to match. Okay. Now I in the past I didn't do it this way so I always end up with the let me find a piece that I end up with. You see right there let me bring it in again you see uh, every corner was working well until the last corner here well the last corner here you see that one I couldn't get another embossed uh, five perforations between there because there's not enough space but if you're doing it this way here, all corners match and you don't have any decision to make. <laughs> and then you just start perforations. Again, uh, if, you, if you're going to follow all the marks, oh, sorry, keeps, keeps uh, losing focus. okay if you're going to follow the mark here and here that we did then you know when you do re-perforate or perforate deeply you won't have any problem getting uh, the needles back into the holes okay let me turn this around so the line is on my left again uh, if you are working in a different manner just uh, do it <laughs> Okay, again, I match the corn, uh, match the the needle first before I go on. Now I'm going to move this one out because it's in the way, and then start with that first one. Okay, let me move uh, focus in again. 
Let me move it on this side so you can see better. And then start perforations. Follow the pattern below until the end. But uh, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, you can do reverse from uh, what I'm showing now by okay removing all this first. And then you want pattern to be on top because you want the needle to go back into the hole, you know, easy. So what you do, you, you still do the same way. Uh, get the needle to the middle of the uh, five needle per fraction there. And then go to the, go to the parchment, go to your project there and find that the same hole. Match it. This one here. And then match the bottom there. Okay. So now you can see the hole better and then you can always fall into the hole. So it's almost like re-perforate. And then you don't miss uh, uh, those holes. <laughs> okay, I can do that this way. I move this one out and then start doing it. Even you cannot see, but you know, the result is the same because you follow those uh, perforations you have done. Just don't talk to anyone or don't leave it because if you leave it, you have to flip over and see what you have, where you have perforated. But not a problem because you, she, husband always, you know, ask for meals <laughs> or drinks and then we just have to uh, get up and leave our needles, uh, our tools from our hand and then come back again. Okay. Now, I finish that one and then I turn my project. So the lines on the left side, again, I move this one here to the outside of your uh, design area. So tiny to see, I move this one closer. So what I do, I go back to the last hole and then align the needle and then keep going. Whoop. Again, match this one here with your needle tool. So you don't have make uh, new holes. I mean, extra holes because uh, the needle you hold is not in the same position. And then if you work this way, you know, you can go quite quick because uh, the needle fall into the hole and then you just push it through. Uh, mark it only. Don't go too deep. Okay, and then go to the end where uh, the last, sorry, where the last one is. Okay. And we're removing all the pins, and then you, you take a look at the back. Okay, and whoa, I have to find something for it to focus. You can see now I have uh, all perforation done, and for sure the corners, you know, are matched. All right, so that's for the per perforations. Um, we have done this part over here, right here, okay, and then the next one is embossing. So this is the front where I mark with the tape, so I turn to the back and start embossing. I ask you to choose the two sizes of embossing tool, the smallest, two smallest, I mean second smallest second finest embossing tool and then the next one okay if you follow my the what do you say uh, embossing video uh, I would use this uh, small size and start embossing now when uh, you see the hole that I did there a bit big uh, so when you use the pin I suggest you use the, the fine pin uh, like for sewing 
the short pins from stationary shop uh, are too fat. So when you use it into the hole, it enlarge the hole. So sometimes that that hole after embossing and cutting, reperforating and cutting, it could drop off because the hole is too big. So I suggest to use the the finest uh, pin. Okay. So start embossing one at the corner and then skip one, just like uh, what we did on the pattern, and then skip and then emboss. Now, when uh, we're going to do the outline first, we're not filling in the, the, the center. Just keep going like that. One skip one. You can try not to miscount when you do this one here. Because uh, in your pattern, you already marked uh, uh, embossing and making the corner matched already okay oh i was scared there <laughs> okay now you see the corner have embossed the same embossed okay let me see okay oh how come it's saying some one person watching the rest is not anyway okay uh, then I would change, I would uh, emboss with this, uh, the, f uh, the f second fine tool all around. But I'm going to show you only on one side. And then you switch to the next size that uh, we chose. Um, go ahead and fill in the center. Now, like I said, if you chose, if you chose to emboss a circle like that, because you're afraid you might uh, fall into the hole in the middle or you break it or something, then you can just stop there. It's up to you. But really, if you keep going like I do, you won't, you're not going to break the holes if you use the right size of the tool, of the embossing tool. Now, the small size could definitely, you know, fall into the hole and break the embossing there. So you switch to slightly larger and then emboss right in the center like that just like you see I used a big pin a big needle so it give me too big hole but uh, with the perforating that I did with the the five needle tool the hole is not so big so you just go on top of the hole the whiter you can get on uh, making lace it just make your lace popped the la the little you emboss the uh, the lace just uh, not as nice i think but like i said uh, it's up to your preference mm -hmm. everybody like different things so you know go for what you like but uh, this is what i do when i was learning also i was so scared to uh, to emboss or over the hole but then through time I was like mm, I didn't like that effect you know just ring around the circle it's it just it just looked funny to me okay so you can see nothing broke so you use a if per mano two is the ex, uh, the small small ball and extra small not the fine two not the fine stylus okay then you keep going. Uh, let me turn the corner so when we cut, uh, I have something to show you. So, one skip one, skip one. Okay. okay. Then I turn to the front for reperforation. So we we are on this at this step right now. Okay, so it's a step one, step two. Then if you if you don't reperforate or make the hole bigger like that, then you know you won't be able to cut really. I mean, even you can cut, but you won't get a good result because you try to poke <laughs> um, the holes or make the hole bigger for the scissors tips to go in. So that's not, you know, a good way to do it. So you go to step three, 
by making the holes bigger. So once you, you, you can see right away when you made the hole bigger, um, the embossing look nicer. And then it brings back that hole that uh, I embossed over. So, you know, don't be scared that uh, after embossing, the hole's gone. It comes back when you re-perforate. Uh, when you re-perforate, uh, we don't uh, do like when we did uh, continue us uh, perforation. It's just uh, perforate uh, one on the on the embossed one, and then skip that one, and then uh, perforate, re-perforate those embossed one, and then one needle that I ask you to you know bring is for this this hole. Uh, simply because, like I said, if you don't uh, follow the the way I, I showed you, meaning your needle turn a uh, different angle, then when you uh, re-perforate, sometimes one hole is like larger or it's, it's I don't know, <laughs> you probably know what I mean. Uh, so try to match the, the, the holes and your needle so they don't give you funny look and in order for cutting you see the f the perforation spacing is so big if you compare to the four needle four needle tool you see right here so we are so used to cutting this one it comes in nature no problem at all but compared with the five needle there, you can see the, the holes are far apart. So that's why the twist twist uh, thing comes in place. It's elongate uh, the holes and then bring them close together, making your cutting, you know, a uh, piece of cake really. So I suggest you do that. But if you don't like, you can just stop uh, that far, re-perforate deep, and then try cutting. Okay, so we go bring back the tool. What time is it? Okay, nearly an hour again. Okay, bring the tool back. And then I know that this thing is facing me for all, all sides because I keep turning the, uh, the project around uh, this way. So when I work on this side, the, the tool is still holding this way. You see what I mean, right? So, but if you don't remember, you can always go back to your pattern here where, you have, where we have marked this side, you're holding the tool this way, and then this side, you're holding the tool the other way. Okay, so go to the first one, let me move it down and then on here so you can see. Hold the tool vertically, not in an angle. Push it further in. I mean, if, you, if I lift this one up and let you see, it just, uh, the needle all gone. Whoop. The needle is gone through the, the what you call, the parchment okay bring it up and then keep going to the next one you skip again on that one and then do it okay don't push too hard because if you push too hard the 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 embossed go back just lightly touch it but go down a bit deep Okay, you go all the way down if you want if you don't want to go another step. And then use the one needle tool. I use bald. And then poke that hose. Make it bigger. The the reperforation is just bring back the holes that you know uh, after embossing the holes could be disappeared like this one here even you don't cut you still have to re-perforate to bring back the holes they look nice and neat in at this and the same size okay 
Now for for me, I would go one step further, which is twist twist, make the uh, bring the two holes close together. Now you need to practice on this one first because if you twist too much, the thing drops, <laughs> and then you'll be crying and saying, "Oh my God, come so far!" And then you know, uh, the twist twist is the, is is the same. You deep you reper you just like reper afraid. You go deep. Don't do don't uh, don't do it by the tip because if you use the tip to do twist twist, the needle gets damaged because they are too fine, and there's nothing to really force uh, the needle to stay in place. So the holes, uh, the elongate hole, it won't be nice either. So you go deep to the neck of the needle, and then just do a small left and right hold the paper down hold the paper down you don't leave the paper not secure because if the paper move with you then the hole won't uh won't get l longer okay right there you can see closer okay i would practice a few more go deep all the way down and then twist twist you can peek a little bit if you want to see really because you want to see what you're doing. So you just uh, not go down to the end. Maybe just a bit that you can see what you're twisting. Okay, so I'm going. Going, one uh, again, skip the one that no embossed. Just twist on the, on the embossed one. There's many ways of using five needles. Uh, I mean, emboss. You can emboss different way and give you different, you know, lace work. After. Okay, so I've done twist, twist. You see the difference between the one that I didn't reperforate and then the one that I reperforate and then twist, twist. This one, you know, you'll be laughing. Oh, cutting is a piece of cake, really. But if you try to um, uh, to cut this one, or even the one with just perforations, you you'll be like, oh my god, mm -hmm. I can't. I I wouldn't even try to cut because the picket cut will not happen. You will get like different different effect from what you want. Okay, so I've come this far. The cutting. Let me find the scissors. I think I have achieved uh, so far. The corners match perfectly for all sides. For all corners, I mean. Okay. <laughs> now for the cutting, uh, don't start at the corner because the corner is the, the one that always drop off. So leave it last. And then go on to the, the next one. Bring this when you have the holes quite far from one another, you just bring the scissors down very low to the to the parchment. Now cutting, you have to uh, place the scissors at the right and at the right at the right uh, side. Now I'm cutting this part away and keeping the card. So the scissors always on top of the waist. You don't cut this way. Uh, okay, you always cut this way where the scissors on the waist part of the card. And then I go on with this one here. I'll just cut a little bit to show you. Okay. Oh, the eye is getting worse. <laughs> uh, there's always there's also another way of cutting. I mean, I've seen uh, many many patches cut different from you know uh, from what I do. If you can achieve uh, the picket cut, then anyway is fine. Cut too far. 
Okay, here it is. I didn't even look if I was in the camera. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So you see the corners there and then corner there. Once you cut everything, the corners match. And then your card is... Uh, the corners are what you call... Uh, at the right angle. Okay. So I bring this out and then... Come and see what I have done with this one here. Okay. Oh, okay. I have to tell you next about uh, tracing. Okay. Um, like I told you, I didn't trace from the beginning simply because of the corners. Uh, trying to match the corners, causing the card to be either, you know, bigger or smaller. So after you have done this part here, you cut the you don't have to cut the card to trace. You can cut later, but I was showing you how to cut. So I normally wouldn't cut. I would go ahead to trace. So I bring the pattern back. Pattern back. Okay. And then uh, you can just place it directly back. Try to find what you call the line okay now if you ask me how to make all these lines along the perforations okay, like this line over here okay, I should have done that before cutting so I turn to the back and then I bring one needle tool in you can use a fine stylus uh, it's also fine depends on how thick the line you want if you want uh, even thicker than fine stylus can can produce you can choose whatever you like so i'm aiming at this uh, at this uh, right here is the the perforations i don't want to go on to the perf perforation maybe just between or uh, the middle of this second uh, five perforate five needle perforations, so I would place it there and then there, and then you have to look here too. That's where you go, and then you keep you make that line. Go twice. Make the when you use the needle, don't hold it upright. You will break the paper, so you have to line uh, the two quite flat. And then keep going. Okay. And then I will go to the other side, do the same thing. Find that hole. And then this hole was cut already. Anyway, I can just... Now, these lines, you know, you should make because it helps keep uh, the parchment. You, you see... Uh, if I didn't emboss this line, the parchment kind of curl upward uh, to the, on the front. But then after I've made the lines, the, the parchment kind of balance out. So you should uh, make these lines. But uh, the line shouldn't make, shouldn't make, shouldn't be made before you start perforations. Because if you need to adjust uh, the the uh, if you need to adjust uh, uh, to make the the oh <laughs> to make the corners match then the lines kind of block you in and then you can't uh, really change add or reduce uh, how to say add more perforations or reduce perforations so do do the lines last you see how neat it looks now Okay, and then place it on the pattern. Now you have the line already, you can see better. So if you have enlarged, I mean you have uh, increased the numbers of perforations, like over on this side here, I, in, I don't know if I increased or not, <laughs> I don't remember, but I think I did. Okay, so I would just put it in the center there. Oh, oh. Oh, sorry. Okay, come. Okay. So you just uh, kind of place it in the center, you know. And then tape all down and then start tracing. 
easy as that. <laughs> now this one here, you know, I didn't I didn't trace using white pencil or anything. I trace using embossing tool. So when you trace with uh, any white pencil, tinted ink or ink or pencil, whatever, you have to trace from the front. So that's why the tape is there for the front. So you place your pattern on the, uh, you place your parchment front side up onto the pattern. But this one I trace using embossing tool. So it's just like embossing. Instead of uh, placing this way, I reversed it. So I trace from the back with embossing tool. So that's enough for today, I guess. <laughs> well, I hope I'm making sense until the end. If you have any questions, like I said, you know, just leave me a comment because I didn't look at the at the screen at all. Try to finish <laughs> whatever in front of me. Okay, so um, if you would like to turn it into, you know, uh, what you call bookmark or a card, just place it like that and then use a ribbon or something to hold. I wouldn't glue, you know, I, I really hate gluing parchment onto the backing paper because somehow it showed through. So I have other ways, you know, by using the ribbon and then I think most designers use brats also. So any, any, any way you like, really. I have also made this one here. Okay. And that's just embossing only, really fun. And then I made a few. I can't, can't find them now, but I had to bring it out from the phone because I'm using the phone for looking. Okay, so uh, let me tell you something. If you have any question, like I said, leave a comment. I'll, I'll reply to you later. And uh, let me find that uh, I have, you know, to... Facebook pages created for parchment only, which, you know, I think in the next live, Facebook live, I will go through those pages because uh, my friends uh, outside parchment world, probably they don't want to see what I do. So it won't bother them. So if you can, you know, if you like to follow me, uh, you can go to this page.